blessings 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 people and we are in the wilderness again and it is ruins emmanuel a son and myself j flames it's real talk podcast baby real talk podcast baby and you know um it's gonna get deep as it usually does Big up everyone for the feedback we've been getting oh, lately man. because it's been amazing. It's yo. been amazing, man. Amazing. Everyone that's watching, we love you. We see you. Yep, yep. All had requests to put subtitles on there now. Yeah. <laughs> we got international audiences, you get me? We got uh, people listening all over the world, yeah, man. Yeah, man. You know it's a mean? beautiful thing, man. It's a beautiful thing. So today's episode is about... Overcoming shame. Overcoming shame. And like shame, 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 shame. Where's my shame. bell? Shame, shame. shame. Get me when they march that Cersei's in the middle of the street. Shame. See, that, that, that can just, <laughs> you see, you see, just someone trying shame at you. Yeah, yeah. And doing nothing else, just shame. Yeah. That can destroy you from inside. Oh, you man. never be able to put yourself back together again. Damn. Bro. Damn. Like that's those words. Shame. I think shame is probably the biggest enemy of the human race. Is it shame? Damn, it really is. Even the word shame. It's horrible. Like just the, <laughs> just <laughs> the word shame is mad. I mean, I want to start this off. I want to kick this off with um, with asking you this question. And I know we never really think about questions before we start recording, but today I've been thinking about this question. Okay. Um, can you recall the first time you felt shame? Hmm. The first time I felt shame. And this is going to sound mad because I embrace this now. Yeah. But as this is real talk, the first time I, I, I felt shame was realising that being a Rastafarian youth and having Rastafarian yeah. parents was something not normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And all, all of the the looking down on back in the day mm. of of people that wore dreads or because our parents had dreads and people that were rusters they were looked down upon yeah yeah they really and were. and people didn't they didn't make secret of that mm-hmm. so i remember going out into the world and feeling a sense of shame of being a ruster mm. which is something obviously we're talking about overcoming shame but it's, which is something now i now embrace yes yes <laughs> yes you know but yeah, that's that. Uh, yeah, literally, I think that's what that's, it would be. Yeah, I mean, big up Caperton and guys like Sizzle yeah. and stuff like that because they really helped us to embrace our Rastafarian mm-hmm. roots. You know what I'm saying? They made it cool to be Nayabingi and yeah. Bobo and yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Because being a Rastafarian, it, it was, it was, it was looked down upon. Yeah, it really you was. Know, our parents yeah. had to go through so much mm-hmm, mm-hmm. shame and ridicule mm. and. You know, hiding their dreads from their parents and yeah. all them type of things there. Like, yeah. So, yeah. obviously, you know, as we spoke about this the other day, our mom made a decision to not put dreads on our head when we were kids. Yes. Because she didn't want us to face hardship mm-hmm. in life or mm-hmm. any more hardship. Mm-hmm. And kind of knowing that from a kid, it was like, well, if our mom and our dad wear dreads, but they don't want to give us dreads, then is it something to be ashamed or embarrassed about? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that caused confusion yeah. <laughs> and what about you the first time i felt real shame i mean did you have shame around what i just said oh 100 percent, man like, i wanted to i wanted to be like the normal kids when i was a kid yeah like, what what i perceived as normal you know mm. I, I, yeah man it was just like oh why 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 did your parents come to the school and that like, they wear those colors why do they play that loud reggae music? Why is their hair like that? Why is their hair like that? Does your that? dad smoke weed? Does your dad smoke weed? Oh, that one, Reese. <laughs> Does your dad smoke drugs? Bob yeah. Marley. Bob Marley. <laughs> is your dad Bob Marley? <laughs> and then, and then, just on the whole other side of that here, us. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was. Boy, it was all. T- it was all type of shame. And then, <laughs> yeah, dealing with like, especially in the Caribbean, yeah. man, it's worse. Oh, dude, the Caribbean was man. Where we was living out there, Jesus Christ. The Rastas live in the hills, bro. Yeah, they they, don't, they, yeah, they run away from society, bro. But look how the world changed, man. Yeah, it's, well, yeah. If it was Everyone dead, got dread on their head now. Dreads, Fashion, bro. man. Flash dreads. I mean, yeah. The first time I I felt like shame, I realized what shame was. I remember 
man was a kid, I was like maybe six or seven. And um, I was constipated, bruv, yeah. <laughs> like the night before, I couldn't shit, yeah, I was constipated. <laughs> and um, in the morning, I had school, and my mum didn't want me to stay at home, so she gave me milk and magnesia, yeah. <laughs> Could probably guess where this is going, yeah. I remember. So, oh man, you remember, yeah. I, I remember. remember. So I went to school, yeah, belly full of milk and magnesia. Obviously, I felt the rumblings, yeah. I literally had to run to the toilet, run out of the class. As I'm running out of the class, yeah, I'm shitting on myself. Like then, <laughs> then and yeah, then, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and I remember, yeah, no one clocked, yeah? yeah. So I stayed in the toilets, bruv, yeah. Yeah. And then after a while, the teacher noticed I was missing, and she had to come. And basically that like, cover the toilets and that like, what's going on and i'm yeah. just like i'm like oh my days i don't know that like, yeah, yeah. sh- i remember that. everywhere i remember the, <laughs> i remember the teacher put your put your uh your yeah, stool yeah, yeah. in the plastic bag <laughs> and sent you home with it <laughs> why did she why did she put and i remember i was like what bag. like she just couldn't get over one. <laughs> I, I thought that was incredibly yo, hilarious by the way yo that was that's the first time i felt shame, shame. and i think like that set the president in my life to like run from shame anytime it appears and see anything as shame like i went through school like any anyone look at me wrong or say the wrong thing yeah. i'm flipping the table yeah 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 like that my shame started from dear and that's the thing about shame yeah. is that the more shame you have mm. inside is the more respect you demand yes 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 which means you can feel disrespect when there isn't even really mm. disrespect there someone could just be joking with you and just say something like for me for example when i was young i always wore hats but i, I always remember from a young age people used to say i had a peanut head like you know what i mean like because the shape of my head right <laughs> he's got a peanut head and and i remember thinking i don't know why having a peanut head was shameful yeah yeah but just the way it was being said it's like Mm -hmm. i don't want to have a peanut head Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) you understand what i'm saying so maybe i mean i love hats but maybe when i was young maybe that was a part of a reason why i wore hats so much because i just didn't like the shape of my head and there's just so many things even being called lanky i used to hate imagine that being tall back in the day was a bad thing being tall people were like you're lanky you're tall and you're slim man And, and that word lanky used to Rage and bubble in my that, yeah? soul, yeah. Brad. He said, "You're lanky, you're tall, you're slim, and you're dark skin. All the things that women desire. All the things that women <laughs> desire. A six foot dark skin man with a bald head. Like, but, but, yeah. but when man was young, I would have never yeah. thought. No, because man made that look like that was yo. You're lanky, tall, and dark skin, Brad. You what?" But that was, something, that was something to be ashamed of. Yeah. Now that is something that is desired, and yeah. I think that's what I love about. Mm-hmm overcoming shame it's like once you own it and you wear it whatever it is you wear and you own your insecurity because your insecurities are only really created by other people yeah yeah because they can't deal with their own insecurities so they will create insecurities in other people and then cause them shame and shame lives inside it festers inside Ooh. like a do you know what i mean like a like like a, um like a leech yeah, it does. sucking away at you and, and 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 your shame becomes your own yeah you know and being able to overcome that and then holding on long enough for whatever you were shamed about to now be the in thing mm-hmm. uh man i just think it's, it's it's a beautiful thing to witness and 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 it, it allows you to overcome it from within yeah when you own it and you wear it wear that wear that wear that wear shame, that shame. Shirt, mate. because you know what's crazy thing is yeah you know we grew up with a lot of brothers that didn't have no shame in it like a lot of brothers that would draw one girl, get turned down, draw her brethren, get turned down, draw that brethren, get turned down. And they had no shame, bruv. Mm. Like, there was no shame in the game, bruv. Man get turned down by 10 chicks, it's feuding him. Mm-hmm. Like, I've never been that type of brother. You leave a hate I, rejection. Oh, my days. It's like the shame of it. Yeah. And it's like, those brothers, yeah, that was like that, yeah, that had no shame. Well, you couldn't bring shame to them, bruv, because shame didn't exist in their world, nah. bruv. You couldn't shame them in that in that way. You couldn't be like, ha, 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 you got turned down. Man but would they, be like, yeah, I'll try again. But their shame was in a in a very different way. Mm. So a lot of people's shame is, like I said, like shame lives inside. Yes, yes. And, and one thing about something that lives inside, like shame, is that people will do their utmost. They will pretend to be whoever they need to be 
to never allow that shame to be exposed because people see it as a weakness. So people that you think had no shame, it's not that they had no shame, it's that they would just distract you with their behavior. Mm. So you don't really see what it is that they're insecure about because they saw that shame as a weakness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every single person has, has shame. Even the ones that look like, it's just, it just means that they might not have shame about the same things you have shame. Yeah. Like, for, like for, for yeah, like for instance, man wasn't really that person that would just go and just try my luck on every single girl I see. I have to be at least 60, 70% sure. S- semi-confident. That I'm going to get some play here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and if not, i got to be confident in myself yeah. that yeah. I'm going to make this happen, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so sometimes I'll just be like, you know, man, you know, I don't need that rejection, bro. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Man's already dealing with like not feeling like I fit in in this world. In the first place, I don't need any more. Nah, man, we'll talk, bro. <laughs> any more reminder of the fact that man's a bit odd. Yeah. Man's a bit different. And man like, comes from a different life, a different family. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's true. And like grow, growing up in the hood and that, but we've seen all the levels of shame. We've seen levels of shame to the point it's little things like, ah, oh, man get turned down by a girl or whatnot, or, you know, say when I was a kid, man shit myself and them things, they're little levels of shame, yeah? But then man seen in the hood, blood. Shame where a man has come back to the club with a shotgun and blood, killed a man and killed a man. Blood. Yeah, like, that people, like man knows they want like, y- Yeah, bro. And they're sitting in prison right now because of. And you know, this is the thing. There's, <laughs> we've got to make this clear. Mm-hmm. There's three different levels of shame. Yeah. There's embarrassment. There's there's being shamed, and then there's humiliation. <sighs> Humiliation, bro. You see, humiliation. Humiliation will make you take somebody else's life. Yeah. Yeah. Premeditated. Not yeah. manslaughter, murder. You've mm. meditated. You, you've sat down and you thought on how you're going to take this person out. Damn. Humiliation, bro. And I feel like so many people go through their life trying to avoid humiliation. Yeah. So we create characters and, and live in our egos to be you know who we think people will want to accept mm-hmm. because the mm-hmm. thing about shame is shame basically is a feeling inside of you that you are not acceptable being who you truly are mm. Mm. that's what shame is so embarrassment is like you know like oh okay yeah yeah kind of people were laughing at me shame is like oh oh wow like uh, how i truly am is not is not um accepted you know, okay, I need, I need to start rejecting parts of myself. Yeah, yeah. And then you start fragmenting parts of yourself and you become different, a different person. Humiliation. I was about to ask, is, what is humiliation? Humiliation is a, is a, is a complete ego death. Oh! A personality death. You've died inside. Ooh. You have been humiliated. Hmm. You understand? Yeah. Some people cannot yeah. come back Damn. mentally like, I've or been physically from humiliation like I've really been working on shame like even doing this podcast is <laughs> part of man's work on shame and them that them things there but you see like even embarrassment like I, I don't really feel much shame and embarrassment no nah. more do you know what I'm saying but um humiliation nah, I'm never trying to feel that yeah nah 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah nah that could be <laughs> yeah that could end I could end up in jail after yeah yeah, that yeah you will end up in jail yeah yeah that's imagine someone still. went out of their way to humiliate yeah, you yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. like that's now that's 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 on a completely different level now that is mm. like you've tried to socially murder me cancel <laughs> social yeah yeah no not even yeah not even cancel because cancel is you kind of doing something and it coming back for you. Yeah, yeah. You're trying to socially murder me. You're trying to make sure that I never be able to 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 to, to live a normal life ever again. Like, for example, um, that brother on New Year's Eve. The, the brother that gave the girl condolingus on the stairs. Oh, that... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah? You remember that? <laughs> yeah, of course I remember that. You, that was humiliation. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Not what he... D- all right, yeah, well, kind of, yeah. What, I mean, doing uh, giving the girl Connor Lingus on the stairs outside After of a, a club party, is he's a bit still, yeah. mad, yeah? yeah, yeah. But he was humiliated, yeah, man. Did he have to leave his job and all them things? He left there. everything, yeah, his whole life changed, yeah, mad. Even the girl and stuff, she got rejected by her family. Can you imagine? Days, but boy, no one wants yeah. to experience that, yeah, much. that's mad, still. That's mad, still. So, yeah, they're shame. Mm-hmm. And you can get over shame, but humiliation is a direct. Oh man, like oh, just thinking about it gives me shivers. 
So let's talk. <laughs> let's talk about shame in 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 terms of um, relationship. In terms of, I want to kind of touch on the shame of interracial relationships. Mm-hmm. And I know I got friends and stuff like that are, who are in interracial relationships, right? Specifically, maybe black and Asian, mm. and that the shame that the families may have because there's a black man with their daughter or their son is well, with it's a, not even with Asian them, it's humiliation that, that you reckon that's humiliation yeah like? yeah because yeah. they're willing to literally like was it sacrifice yeah yeah or was it blood sacrifice blood sacrifice or, 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 i don't even or, do you know what i mean yeah, some man, yeah. <laughs> yeah. like they're willing to let yeah. neglect and pretty much like that neglect your child because of the color of the skin someone's going with that. and and it's not even they don't even care about the person. It's just that what is yeah. my family going to think about this, that my child has gone outside yeah. of their race? I remember I was talking to um, an Indian girl and her, um, her, her, her mum would standardly say to her, Do you, don't you dare think about getting with no black brother. Mm. And, and I remember when she said that to me, my first thing was like, like I was interested in the girl. And she was interested in me, but I said to myself, yo, I'm not going to put myself through this, from this level of heartbreak. Yeah, yeah. I could just see it. I was just yeah, like, I'm not yeah, going to, yeah, I'm not yeah, going to get involved yeah. in that. I know where this is going, but that, that, that's how it is, bro. Shame can mm. turn into humiliation. When it turns into humiliation, someone's got to die. God damn, yeah. Where would that be? Like, you, you're dead to me or physically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and it's mm-hmm. like, those are extreme levels of shame even like when we was young like you know you 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 wouldn't want to bring back you know a girl to your parents that don't approve yeah like this, this, what's this, their family as, background what's their as this is real talk yeah as we said in the beginning our parents were the fear in. like bringing back home a caucasian woman yeah was like the worst thing we could do. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's not to say our parents were racist or anything like that. It's just the time that they grew up in. It was the culture. It was the culture. Like it's they grew win. up in 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 win win rush uh, f- uh second generation. Where black people stuck with black people, yeah, white, people yeah. stick with white people, Asian mm-hmm. people stick with Asian people. Yeah. Like yeah. It, like all, all not almost like a, a social or cultural segregation. Mm. Because yeah, it was about survival, yeah, and it was about continuing on the race. But our generation, we grew up with every single nationality, yeah, culture, man. race in our classes, so mm. that didn't that didn't really work with us. Nah, it didn't. Because we was like, well, that doesn't really make sense. I'm so fascinated by Chinese culture as a kid, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We got Gao Hong, my old school brethren. Same. You get me? He's a doctor now. But I was so fascinated by. Um, Chinese culture and all different types of cultures from influences from my friends around me and I remember like um, touching back on the, like staying on the same subject of interracial dating I remember when we was kids when we would watch like TV and stuff like that and we would see like black comedians or like man like Lenry Henry and stuff mm. like that and people would tell us whether in school or family members that that ah, he's man a sell out. Sell out. He's a sellout he's a sellout why why because he's successful. Because he's successful. And he loves who he loves. And and, 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 his, and his wife is not black. He was yeah. a sellout, so he, yeah. he brings shame to the race. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember them things of there, course. bruv? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, bruv. You know, that's how a lot of people, a lot of people still think like that, you know, mm. believe it or not. And that's how a lot of people were raised, especially in our culture. It's like, there's a certain way you have to be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Forget who it is you truly are. If you're not like this, then you're bringing shame. Yeah. So then what happens? Like I said, you start to reject parts of yourself and be who you ain't and, and, and pretty much start a life of just unhappiness. Mm. And never. Mm. And that's why so many people aren't connected to who they are. They're not connected to, them, to themselves. Yeah. So that yeah. means they're not connected to anybody else. Mm-hmm. And that's why so many people suffer with anxiety, suffer with depression, suffer with all types of you know mental illnesses and, 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 and cause a lot of hurt, pain because hurt people hurt people that's facts and shame is a deep hurt that is inside which like i said says there's something wrong with me Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you see that feeling that i've had in my life and i know a lot of people that i speak to i've had that feeling from young of there is something wrong with me Mm. and that that's to me summarizes what shame is yeah 
is that I'm not good enough. I'm not enough. There's something wrong with me. Mm-hmm. And that was something that was given to us. It was passed down, was it? It was given to us. Babies and children are not born with shame. <laughs> They're taught shame. So, like, yeah. it's like if you know you're in a room and it's and 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 the, like the whole family's there and and a, and a two year old runs in the room naked, <laughs> and the parent yeah. be like, "Go put some clothes on." The child's laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Child's la- <laughs> but then, but that that shame gets beaten into yeah, him that you should man. be ashamed of your nudity. Yeah, you should be ashamed of your natural body. You should yeah. be ashamed. So then what happens? It becomes repressed. Yeah. And then you grow up and you, and you grow up to, to hate mm. and to be ashamed of your own sexual nature, your own nudity. Yeah. So then it comes out in these... <laughs> Sometimes it comes out in perverse ways. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> it comes out in these really elaborate <laughs> ways that can lead you underground into dungeons. Oh, man. Getting whipped and yeah. your balls stamped on by a dominatrix. <laughs> you know what I know a couple of dominatrix is it so big uh, yeah, big the dominatrix the stories they tell us it's like yeah, a lot of these people come and they you know yeah. I had a friend that was a dominatrix and she, the story she would tell me about guys that would come in and they just want to be humiliated by like, shit in their Chinese and everything yeah like yeah that. yeah put things up their, their bum yeah, and mad. stamp on their balls mad, and just mad. humiliate them and I'm talking like yeah. road man that road man that yeah. road man mad Mad. You know, and and it, it comes from that deep repression of mm-hmm. whatever is natural to you, be it your body and your sexuality, yeah. is, is, is shunned. Oh, definitely. And and it doesn't go nowhere. Yeah. It just goes deep inside, and it festers, and it grows bigger, and it needs to come out. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why you have you know like all types of industries and all types of things, fetishes and stuff that is, mm-hmm. man. You did, listen. There there isn't. A thing that there isn't a fetish for. Nah, there's a fetish for everything, bro. <laughs> Not to say that fetishes are bad, but yeah. That where does it mad. come from, and why does it need to be done in the dark? But you're so right about that. We was given the shape, yeah. Passed like the, down, mate. Yeah, Programmed, like, the, like I always say. Like the metaphor you're talking about with like one as a two year old running into the room naked and he's given that shame, and even the other shame of just like I remember this one that like, being in. You, like you, you, your mom dragged you out of bed yeah to help her with the shopping yeah <laughs> and you've been doing shopping yeah in Peckham High Street yeah and and, and Deptford Market yeah and wherever you're from yeah whatever high street you was for like two hours yeah and you're hungry and you start, you're like wow I'm hungry yeah. <laughs> and you say it loud and it's like, shh, shh. <laughs> yeah. shut up <laughs> and and if you went to like your mom took your parents yeah. like took you to like a friend's house yeah. And uh, <laughs> the friend offered the friend offered um, you you some food as kids. Yeah. And yeah yeah yes please yes. <laughs> I'm very hungry. And then you box off that food there. Yeah, the shame. And you look at your parents and they're like gritting their teeth. Like, wait until we get home. Wait until we get home. You're gonna make them think I don't I'll feed, feed you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we could go on all day about the little yeah. things in the culture, yeah. which is we can laugh about them. And 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 that will br- that brings us on to how we deal with shame. Mm. Should we? Should mm. we? So, so this is overcoming shame. So we can give advice on how we deal with shame because we can yeah. go on all day yeah, about the little things that man had to deal with with shame, sexuality, you know, um, the body, you know, mm. just everything, right? Because these are the things your your sexuality and your 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 um, naturalness is the first thing that is suppressed. Yes, it is. You understand? Yeah. That's why it's so it's so big. And that's why, you know, a lot of people um kinda go astray, you know, and don't know how to hold down relationships and mm-hmm. become, you know, deviant sexually and all types of things and it's just crazy. It's because we don't know how to connect to our naturalness and mm-hmm. so yeah, like uh, so yeah, so going back to this overcoming shame. Yeah. Now we and I don't know if it was something that like um, was premeditated or just something that we've just naturally done is how we do with our shame is we laugh about it. Mm. Talk about that. Oh man, you know what? Yeah, I used to take myself so serious as a kid. Yeah, I had a bad temper. I used to fight all the time. First day of school, 
when I first started secondary school, I got excluded first day. Do you know what I'm saying? I went I to three different fir- pirates. I got excluded in the first week. You got excluded in the first yeah, week? Yeah, for backing my, backing, me and my other brethren, backing my friends in the fight. So, <laughs> I excluded in the first week. Can you imagine? Because I just didn't want to deal with shame. Like, you couldn't see your brethren getting shamed. Yeah, you couldn't see your friend, brethren getting beat up and no, you stood there and watched. No. That's not, that's not the type of man man is. You know what I'm saying? You're going to roll with me after you got beat up now, bruv. We're going to beat this. Yeah, but yeah. But yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we're off, off track. Off track. But, um, <laughs> but yeah. laughing about it. But um, yeah, man, laughing about it. Yeah, I used to take myself so serious, and then I got I got to a probably about the age of I don't know twenty three, twenty four. I was really starting to just look back on what I took serious, and why did I deem these little things so serious? That like, like why do I give five shits mm. what somebody over there thinks about me? Like this person is judging me, mm. and I'm feeling shame about it. But behind closed doors, this brother is probably the worst. Yeah, and he's feeling probably more shame than you are. D- you know what I'm saying? That's why they say. That's why people, people that are bullies, and that bully people, they're the most hurt. Yeah, and they're probably coming from um, an abusive sort of background or seeing mm-hmm. abuse. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, hurt people hurt people. Yeah, man. So it's like when people give shame, it's like. In a way, yeah, it's trying to indoctrinate you into the way that this culture does things. But then the humiliation part of it is people that are trying to hurt you Mm -hmm. because they feel hurt. And I've found that, like what you said, not taking yourself so seriously Mm. and being able to, like laughter is the healing of the soul. Comedy, laughter, joy, happiness. If you can get to a certain point in your life where you can, you've done the healing enough to be able to smile or laugh at your painful moments. If you're able to do that, you're able to overcome the suffering and the pain that has been caused by those painful moments. So for us, it's just like laughing, laughing about it, like remembering a story and being, but at that time it was, it was not fun and it was not funny, but being able to laugh yeah, being able to forget to forget about it and laugh. That's the healing. Yeah. When you can find joy in the most painful moments. That's where healing is. And sometimes you have to go into the dark and sometimes you have to go into all the mess. And you have to be that light in the darkness, not only just out there in the world but within yourself and not be afraid of the of the darkness within you. Yeah, man. And be able to shed light, joy, laughter, happiness. When you're able to do that, you will find healing and then you will find the ability to overcome anything that you've been through. Mm -hmm. Especially your shame. Because you are enough. Yeah. You are enough. Who you are is, is, is perfect. And all those people that told you that you weren't good enough or you're this or we don't do that. And if you do this, you're this and you're that. We're now coming to a place of acceptance in the world where, and it's a beautiful thing where every single person on this earth right now is worthy. Everyone is worthy, man. And you got to show your true colours, man. And with that being said, I want to put a peacock up right now, yeah? Yeah. Boom. That's a beautiful peacock. It is. Look at the colours. It's showing its Confidence. Confidence, bro. And 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 and, yeah. and that's another thing, you know. Also, overcoming shame and and going through your pain and your darkness and and come to that place of healing. Another key factor is having confidence, mm. being being confident in who you are and how you feel and what you believe and what you've gone through. Being confident because confidence is infectious. Yes. Yes. And when you have confidence every single thing would dissipate in front of you you're powerful Mm. confidence is power and when you have power you can affect anything anything man can change anything man and 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 i feel like with shame as well is like a lot of people avoid it because it's uncomfortable yeah but your life begins where your comfort zone ends say that again bruv your life begins where your comfort zone ends. Yeah. And 
I would urge anybody looking for some sort of resolution in their life, any time of uh, overcoming, overcoming anything that has been so painful. My my thing is, go into that and be okay with being uncomfortable. Mm. You know, it's like I remember I was doing this thing. Um, I saw it on um, um, this guy on a talk on YouTube. And this guy was talking about that, like, he has a practice of every day he has a shower, mm. he turns on cold first and then goes to hot. And he said the reason why he does that is to train his brain that uncomfortability doesn't mean death. So That's he said deep. the first times that he would go into the shower and he turn it on cold, it's, ah, it's shivering, it's, you know, you, yeah, you know what it's yeah. like when you, it's yeah, a shock. Yeah, 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 it's a shock to the system. But then he said yeah. after doing that, for a week you turn on the, the shower and you're just and it's cold and you're just wow. and then what happens after another week you start to look forward to the cold okay because so you're you programming your mind yeah to be okay with the uncomfortability just as much as you're okay with the comfortability i'm gonna start doing that man. and i did it and this is the thing yeah. i was doing it and and lo and behold i became excited to go into the bath into the shower in the winter turn on the cold and and be completely still in that and that's meditation wow that yeah. you are not yeah. yeah you are not affected by what happens outside of you mm -hmm. what you are affected by is how you react to what's happening outside of you damn man and it's training your brain to be absolutely okay with whatever you're going through in that stillness throw off a screen man and 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 right here i'm gonna throw up i'm gonna throw up a a, a, a still lake a beautiful still lake right and overcoming anything is to get to the point where you are still no matter what's going on and you're still and to quote the great bruce lee you must be like water, my friend. Be like water. Yeah. Put Bruce Lee up on it, actually. Bruce Lee, boom. Yeah. <laughs> so um. Yeah, man. Yeah, overcoming shame, you know, and 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 again, it's it's it, there's levels to it, and it's like I'm not saying that like, oh God, let's shame me tomorrow, and I won't punch you in your face. <laughs> You know what I mean? I, you know, I'm a guru, but you know, <laughs> you know, but, but what I am saying is that everything is a process. Man. Everything's a process, man. And um, for us, it helped by learning to l laugh at things. And, you know, sometimes I just walk down the street and I'll be thinking of like something that was like painful to me back in the day and mm. I'll just be laughing. Yeah. Or something yeah. that I used to like stress or worry about. And I just... Mm. And I'm just laughing and, and, and that has been happening to me for years now and I'm just laughing in my head because I realise how ridiculous it actually is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, man. Laughter is the best remedy, It man. is, man. It really is. And talking about things. Yeah. You know. Talking about it, whether you have a podcast, whether you write in a journal, yeah. whether you write about it in your music or whether you just talk to your yeah. friends. And like, I tell you what, yeah. if you have people around you and you talk to them about things you might feel shamed about, and they and they further, they further hold that shame and they further push that shame on you. Mm. I tell you what, right now, delete their number in your phone book. Delete it. Yeah, but if anyone around people. you is giving you shame about something that you have told them, or not something that in your mind you haven't said anything, right? Because some people, um, they they're extra sensitive when they feel mm. shame, so they mm. will see disrespect when it's not there. But it's something you've said to somebody, yo, you, you got pain around, or you, you, you know, and they're trying to make you feel shame for who you are don't have them in your life yeah because you will never overcome your shame yeah, and you'll always continue to be a people pleaser and never be truly who you are and if that's if you want to be who you are not then that's okay but if you want to be truly who you are then you need to surround yourself around people yeah that encourage the true you yes in all of your shame in all of your mess in all of your everything damn and on that note yeah it's been real talk podcast with Ruins Emmanuel Ja Rastafari A son and J Flames Highly Celeste Joseph Judah Johnson Yeah man you know.
Love and blessings always, man. Peace. Love. For anyone that ain't seen my head, look, peanut head. Ha ha ha.